Hi, I'm Johnny. The aim of this tutorial is to animate a bouncing ball using the animation player in Godot 3.1. We're going to turn this sad looking ball into a happy one. Let's start by making a simple ball. Open up Godot and create a new 2D scene by clicking in the panel to the left. I'm going to rename this root node ball. Hit the plus button and add a sprite. You can use the search bar at the top to find nodes quickly. While the sprite node is selected, click and drag the image found in the bottom left to the texture property across the screen. Our sprite now has a texture and is displayed in the editor. You can make your own ball sprite at 128 by 128 pixels or download the source files found in the description below. Click on the root node again and add an animation player. These are all the nodes we need for this example. When you click on the animation player, the panel at the bottom changes. This is where we're going to spend our time making animations. Create a new animation by clicking the animation button and selecting new. I'm going to call this animation bounce. We can now see a timeline in the animation panel. First off, I'm going to set the animation length to 2 seconds by altering the value next to the clock on the right. The light grey area on the timeline is updated to show this. Animations are made up of different tracks. A track just stores information of a property throughout the animation. For this bouncing animation, we just need to change the position and the scale property of the sprite. Add a new track by clicking Add Track and selecting Property. Select the sprite and click OK. Now we're presented with all the properties of the sprite. In Godot, the sprite node inherits the position property from Node2D. Scroll down and open the position property. If someone drops a ball, it hits the ground and rises vertically, then falls back to the ground. Here we have the important keyframes of the animation. Notably, the highest point happens halfway throughout the animation. Let's put this into practice. Select the animation player, then select the sprite. You'll notice keyframe symbols appear to the right of the properties. Anything with a keyframe symbol we can alter, but we only want to change the position for now. Make sure the animation is at the start by dragging the pointer to the beginning of the animation and click the position keyframe icon. You can find position under the transform section. The keyframe is now on our timeline. Move the pointer to the middle of the animation and change the Y value in the position property to minus 250. Then add another keyframe. Do the same for the end of the animation, but reset the position to 0, 0. Let's see how that looks. Move the animation to the beginning and press play. It looks bad. It looks really bad. To make the movement look more natural, and as if it's under gravity, we're going to add some easings to the movement. Easings basically dictate how one value moves to another. For example, if I click on the first keyframe, an easing graph is displayed in the top right. We want the ball to slow as it gets to the top, as a ball would if it was under the effect of gravity. Right click and choose the Out option. The graph changes to show that, rather than moving linearly from one value to another, the value now curves towards it. If we play the animation again, we can see this in effect. Likewise, we want the fall to happen slowly at first, then move towards the ground faster towards the end. Click on the second keyframe and set the easing to In. Playing the animation again will show a more natural movement. I'm going to set the animation to loop so we can see real-time changes going forward. Click on the loop icon next to the animation duration. Play around with the easings graph by clicking and dragging to see different results. For now I'm just going to use the values we used earlier. An important part of animation is the concept of squash and stretch. You can see in this example that it adds more energy to the animation. If you want to check out more information on this topic, I'll put the link in the description below. For our animation, we want the ball to splat on the ground and stretch up to a neutral size at the top of the animation. For this, we need to change the scale property. Add a new property track to the animation and look for scale under Node2D. Like we did before, we're going to set some important keyframes first. 
At the start, we want the width of the ball to be long and the height to be short. Stop the animation, move to the start and set the X value of the scale property to 1.5 and the Y value to 0.5. Click the keyframe icon to add the keyframe. In the middle of the animation, we want the scale to go back to normal. So set the scale back to 1.1. 1, 1. Add another keyframe at the end of the animation and set the scale to 1.5, 0.5. Running the animation now, we can see the animation still looks a bit dull. So we're going to add some in-between keyframes. For a start, we want the ball to really have the feeling of launching up. Move to 0.2 in the timeline and set the scale to be 0.5 and 1.5. Running through the first part of the animation, we can see it already looks a bit better. I'm going to do a similar trick towards the end of the animation. I'll right click this keyframe to duplicate it, then drag it to 1.8. The last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of elasticity to the top of the bounce. I'll head on over to 0.8 and set X to 1.2 and Y to 0.8. Then I'll add another keyframe at 1.2 seconds and swap the values. Running the animation now looks much better, but it's a bit slow. I'll click on the animation player and double the speed of the animations it plays. Oh, there we go, a happy ball. Note that I haven't bothered tweaking the easings for the scale track. You could, but I think it looks fine the way it is. It's up to you to experiment. Thanks for watching. I hope that was useful in some way. Feel free to like or dislike the video and offer suggestions for similar tutorials in the comments below. Cheers.